Hi guys, welcome back. So from last time, we have tried to drive the uh, AT card with the J Moab by sending the loss topic, the command velocity, and we can prove that it works. For this time, we're gonna try to drive another uh, type of card, which is the PDVM card. So basically, the PDVM card is just the chassis, the card with the left and right DC motor. In order to drive those DC motor, you will need to have an ESC which is an electronic speed controller. For the ESC, for example, this one, you can just plug the motor cable to these two cable, and this is just for the battery. This cable is just input the PDVM signal. So you can use the PDVM signal from the RC receivers, or you can uh, use another kind of device to provide the PDVM signal to this ESC. And luckily for us that um, our JMO app can drive the PDVM signal for left and right wheel. So you need to just plug the PDVM cable of left and right wheel to uh, the JMO app. But first we need to flash the JMO app firmware to the PDVM card, and then we can try to uh, drive it with the ROS topic command. So first let's try to flash the firmware. And here is the, our uh, PDVM card that I'm going to use for today. So here is the Jason Nano and two channel PDVM driver, 10 amps ESC. So it can drive both left and right wheel. It's the MDDRC10, so from Cytron. Here is just a DC DC regulator that we used last time. So our uh, main battery will come from the top lid here, which is the Makita battery. So you can just plug and slide the battery there and then uh, you can get the power inside here and the uh, Wi-Fi router so similar with the last time we can SSH to the robot by the Wi-Fi so this card is using the crawler that you can just drive in uh, any terrains so it's from the Japanese company Cuborex so if you're interested please check on their website as well and here is the JMO app, so I'm going to plug this to the Justin Nano and then power on by the Makita battery and then flash the firmware on this port. Okay, so back to our Windows PC. Then uh, I open the, here the PSOC programmer, similar to um, the last time that we flashed the AT card. Here I plug the programmer and then you will see that it's showing connect and pass but it's not connecting to the JMOAP yet we need to select the firmware um, so here this is the JMOAP ROS2 uh, github repo that I just download to my computer then going to the firmware directories and then you just need to select the firmware v09 pdm esc and then open and as I mentioned last time that you need to be careful. So the V target here, this pin, should be on the, this side of the board. So I'm going to plug it like this to my JMO app. So you can also check this on my uh, GitHub repo, the JMO app ROS2. There's a picture that's showing how to plug it properly. I forgot to power on the battery. Yeah, so we need to put the battery in here to power on everything. Here on the PSOC programmer, you will see that it's showing all three greens. That means uh, it should be fine. Then the, we just need to click on program to flash. Just wait for a few seconds and then if showing programming succeed, then we are good to go. 
And now we just need to uh, restart everything and try to run it. Okay, so here the JMoab is already flashed with the um, PWM card firmware. So in order to provide the PWM signal to the ESC, we need to use this kind of servo cable. So it's a three pin with the white, red, and black. So I want to mention something about the servo cable. It depends on your ESC that is it ground isolated or not. So in my case, and most case, it's uh, not ground isolated, meaning that if, you, if your uh, ESC and your control device come, uh, have the same power source, same battery, your ground will be same. In that case, we need to remove the ground on the servo cable, so here, like this. And also, if your control device, in my case, it's the JMOAP, it has already the power from five, of 5 volt, so we also don't need the 5 volt from the ESC. So I also removed the 5 volt here, the red one. What we need is only the PWM signal. So please keep in mind that depends on the ESC, you may need or not need to uh, remove the red and the black wires. Okay, now I'm connecting the first channel on the JMOAP, the first servo channel, and connect this to the left wheel channel and also the same cable uh, for the second servo out port on the JMOAP and then uh, another side to the right right wheel channel on the ESC so now our JMOAP and the ESC is connecting with this uh, to servo cable and I forgot to mention that we also have the um, S-Bus receiver which we can control the card with the Futaba transmitter similarly with the AT card we can move by the throttle stick and steering stick and change the mode of to manual, whole and auto by the channel 5 so I'm going to power it on and then let's see okay so after we have connect the cable from the JMOAP to the ESC, the servo cable. Then I'm going to try um, power on and do the first test run with my um, RC transmitter. So I can, I'm gonna put it on the manual mode and then drive with the throttle and steering stick. So first, let's power it on. So then, um, similar to the AT card, you can just turn on the transmitter, put it on the manual mode, and then you can drive by the throttle stick. And then right steering, left steering. So similar to the AT card that you can just take control to the, on the robot um, once it got power on and then you can just switch to auto mode and then you can send the ROS topic command later by the computer. Okay guys, so now we're back to the computers and the robot is power on with the battery. So I'm going to SSH to the robot by connecting to the Wi-Fi on the robot and then we try to run the PWM card node and set up something. So first, let me um, connect to the robot Wi-Fi, which is the A1A1, this one. And then, yep, connecting. Then I need to go to the admin page on the robot, the admin page of the Wi-Fi the robot, then just want to confirm the IP. Okay, so this is the uh, IP address of the robot, and then we can just copy it. So on the terminal, we just SSH, JETSON, add, and uh, IP, and the password is the same. So uh, let me log into another terminal as well. Okay, 
Next, I'm going to run the PDM card node. So first, let's check on my the um, GitHub repo. For the things that we need to do is we need to set up the um, SBus dead band. So the way that JMoab send the PDM value to the ESC is by using the SBus range value, and that means the 1024 is the middle of the SBus value and the maximum of the SBus is the 1680 and that's going to make that wheel spin with the full speed and for the minimum value of the SBus is 368 and that's going to make the wheel spin backward fully and on the middle 1024 is going to make the wheel stop and that is the ideal case of the SBus and the speed mapping. But in actual case, the range that makes the wheel stop is not just only the 1024 point. Um, there is a range that when we put the SBus value around 1024, but the wheel is not moving. So we need to find this range and it's called the uh, minimum dead band and maximum dead band. So we're going to increase the speed little by little to see that which S bus value going to make the wheel stop but start to move on both forward and backward. And then we're going to use that dead band in the parameter config file. So every time we run the PDM card node again, it's going to load this uh, offset and then um, we can have the correct speed. Even if we send 1 or 2% of the speed, it can still move with the, um, the correct speed. Okay, so first, let's copy this command, the ROS run jmoab ROS2 PDM card with the argument of show log. And then the log is going to print every one second. So we need to switch the transmitter to auto mode. And then you will see that the mode is showing number two. So on another terminal, we need to send the uh, here the wheels command like little by little, and then observe on the um, LS bus and RS bus here. Yeah, and, and then we're gonna use that value in the parameter config file. So the parameters. The config file is in here, config and pdm card params.yum. So lastly, we need to change this 1024 to some numbers and then uh, we're gonna run that again. Here, I'm going to run this command, last topic command to publish the wheels command at 10% on the left and 10% on the right. So the cart is um, lifting up, not touching on the ground. And put it here, okay. Okay, cool. So I'm going to publish 10% on the left and 10% on the right. And let's see that it's going to move or not. So now it's publishing 10% on left and right and the LS bus is 1089 and 1089 both. <clears throat> but the wheel, you can see that the, the crawler is still not moving at all. That means this value is too low. We need to change to some value that's bigger, maybe 15, 15. and still not moving then it needs bigger so let's try 25 25 oh okay so you can notice that both left and right start to move so that means that should be the values that can make the card move slower so let's try to tune it down then on the 20 here, you will see that the LS bus and RS bus is 1155 of both. So 
and there is the uh, we need to go to this directory the dev workspace source jmr bros2 and config and there is a file pdm card params.yam we just need to edit that file i'm going to use the wimp so i already put 1155 here so don't need to change anything then next we try to uh, set the negative number so the wheels the track on a spin backward yeah 16 so I feel that uh, with the value of minus 20 on the left and minus 16 on the right the wheels is like completely no movement so that could be a good approximation for the minimum death ban so 892 and 919 So once we found the minimum and maximum dead band of the SBUS value, then we're going to restart the PDM card node and we're going to run it again with the prompts file agreement. So here if you check on my uh, JML Bros repo, so you see this command uh, allows to run JML Bros 2 PM card with the ROS agreements of prompts file as the prompts card prompt pdm card params.yam sorry then i'm going to just copy this and then copy this one as the prom file so here you will see that it loads with the new um, sbus max and min dead band that we have uh, edited in the prompts file so now I put the card back onto the ground and then I will try to send the command velocity topic to it. So because um, it's the topic that most people use. So on here, on my laptop terminal, then I need to source the ROS2 uh, environment. And then I'm going to run with ROS2 run and RQT robot steering, RQT robot steering. And here is the RQT robot steering GUI. So we can try to send uh, the velocity here, for example, like 2.0.2 meter per second. So now it's in manual mode, so it's not going to move. But if I push in auto mode, so it starts to move. Then just make it go faster. and steer and go straight then go backward Okay, cool. Yes. Steering. So now we have proof that we can control the robot by sending the command velocity topic. So next, let's try to find that which application that this robot is good for. So please stay tuned.